the forests of Antarctica. Don't ever let anyone tell you that there are no forests in Antarctica. There are. These are forests of large brown macroalgae, which are also called seaweeds, along the western side of the Antarctic Peninsula. So let's look at the major trees in this forest. The shallowest growing of the large brown macroalgae is Desmarestia menziesii. These plants are commonly a meter and a half or greater in length. They can be the dominant macroalgae from about two meters depth to five or eight meters depth, sometimes deeper, depending upon the site. Although Desmarestia species in northern areas are commonly acidic, that's not true of either Desmarestia menziesii or the next species, Desmarestia anseps. Desmarestia anseps is even larger and often co-occurs with Desmarestia menziesii. However, it starts a little bit deeper, say about three to five meters depth. Then it continues much deeper and it dominates communities to depths of 20 or 30 meters depending upon the site. It often covers nearly 100% of the bottom like you see here, rising a meter or more up off the bottom. The biomass levels in these communities are comparable to what you'd find in a giant kelp forest off the west coast of the United States. Like Desmarestia menziesii, this is a long-lived perennial species. At whatever depth the Desmarestia menziesii starts to thin out, it's replaced as a dominant by other perennial brown macroalgae, most commonly by Hematothallus grandifolus. Hematothallus blades are huge, reportedly up to 17 meters long and a meter and a half wide. They lie decumbent along the bottom and often cover nearly 100% of the bottom as you can see here. They are also perennial non-acidic members of the order Desmarestiales. The other brown macroalga that can sometimes be dominant at deeper depths is Cystospheria jacinodi. Cystospheria differs from the other algae you've just seen because it is a member of the order Fucales and also because it has small gas-filled bladders which allow it to float up off the bottom. It is most abundant at depths of approximately 30 meters or greater and it floats up two meters or more off the bottom because of those small spherical structures that you can see in the close-ups. The smaller oblong bodies that you can see in the close-ups are its reproductive structures.